Yo, what's up, viewers of YouTube? Tyler here of Chico Crypto, and I got my friend Bill right next to me for another episode of Crypto Code Exposed, where we go through <laughs> cryptocurrency codes, their GitHubs, and we run them through some quality check software. So before we get into that, Bill, could you introduce yourself for anyone tuning in for the first time? Yeah, hi guys, uh, Bill Petridis. I work in development operations. Uh, I have, I'm a crypto hobbyist, and so what we've done, and as you explained before, we've started to apply some of the concepts that we use in development operations and quality control to code in crypto, just to give people a better, better idea of uh, what their projects are looking like and what they're doing. Um, by all means, they're not exhaustive uh, analysis, uh, but I think they're quite helpful and they give you a bit of a snapshot of um, how the how your project's going and the level of quality that they're uh, that they're putting into it. So, yeah, that's so me. What um, companies have you worked for? Uh, I, I I'm not going to name my current company, but um, no I, I I did this previously for um, Oracle. Okay. Uh, both in in Australia and the US. And look, any time that we applied these continuous integration, continuous quality concepts to a project and made sure that people followed them. The projects went well, they all worked. Um, they were real lifesavers. They made sure that everyone was you know, moving in the same direction. Uh, the quality of what we're producing was good and the projects you know, came out successful. So that, that, that really served me well at Oracle. Um, and actually, they brought me over to the US for a few years to, you know, apply those concepts to some of their projects because some of them weren't going all that well. Um, so, so worked for Oracle for four years. Um, I currently do it for a smaller house and I, yeah, before that built e-commerce sites and so forth. So yeah, I've been around. Been around the block. So <laughs> have you um, gone to one of these like projects and it was, they weren't following this and then they switched over and it just improved like that? Yeah, wow. big time. Awesome. Yeah. There was one in New Jersey, actually, that was, uh, <laughs> I, the, they weren't doing any continuous quality. Basically, all of it was running on one guy's computer, which means no one could help this guy, right? So we put in this framework and we also put in the continuous integration and the continuous quality checking and made it in a way that people could openly work on the code without stepping on each other's toes. And we had, you know, then we set up those dashboards on a big plasma screen in the office. So we, we, we kind of look like clever people. Um, <laughs> yeah, people like walking in and seeing the green lights, red lights, you know, especially management. They're not going to dive into the code and to that level. So, you know, these things were quite helpful and it was a good way of communicating how our projects were going. Um, yes, it's not exhaustive, but it gives you a good snapshot. And I think those same concepts can be applied to crypto code because at the end of the day, it's just code. It's and just code. It's, yep. Well, any um, of the projects we go through, I mean, we're not necessarily saying it's, you know, it's end of the world for this project just because they have a, you know, bad quality check. This is something that you guys as community, if you're part of any of the project's community, you guys should be raising tickets and showing them this. Yeah, and I did that exact same thing. So uh, I guess when we jump to the screen share, I can show you uh, one of the experiences. And I think some good homework for someone watching this is to take a look at some of the scans that we did this week. And if you like one of these projects that we've scanned and you don't like what you see in the quality check, highly recommend you go and raise a, um, a GitHub issue and let us know how you go. Um, you know, keep keep the comms open. You've got your telegram. Let us know if you heard back from them. And, um, you know, we can run the scan again and see if it got better. Yep, exactly. So we'll show you guys, if you want, um, how to raise a ticket as well. All right. Yep. Let's get into it. Okay. So on, on that note, a uh, little bit of follow-up homework from last week. So um, I actually went and did that for Tron, and I, I didn't have a particularly good experience. So that was Tron. Um, and they ended up closing my ticket. So, so they didn't fix anything. They ended up just closing it. Yeah, pretty much. I even offered, and and then I scanned it the other day, and um, I'm kind of bored with Tron now. I think <laughs> it's 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 not going good. Um, 
it, it's it, it's almost getting worse. So it looks like we have 435 bugs, 408 vulnerabilities, and how many code smells? It looks like 6.6k code smells. So could you explain the difference between bugs, vulnerabilities, and smells for anyone who doesn't know? Yeah, um, I mean, a bug's just a flat out uh, poorly uh, coded part of the application that uh, could have issues at runtime. So you know, in, in this instance, uh, if this is Java code, it's, it's going to be running in a Java virtual machine. If you have these bugs, what it's going to do is it's going to create issues for you at runtime and throw errors, um, slow things down. doesn't mean the code won't work. It'll run. It just won't be that great. Uh, so, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you sort them out. Vulnerabilities are uh, potential ways that the code could be misused. They're not necessarily... Some of them could be red herrings and some of them don't, uh, aren't really applicable to crypto. I, I mean, I looked at a couple for, um, for Neo, which I'll show you a bit later. One of them, one of them, the code checker said, you know, you shouldn't be using um, immutable fields. I'm like, yeah, well, you kind of have to. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it's the numbers you're really looking for here. You know, if these guys are getting too high and it's, and, what they did say when I raised the initial ticket was, um, you know, we're using it and we're continuously improving. And um, no, they're not. No, yeah, fifty-five new bugs in the last thirty days. Yeah. So they closed my ticket. I'm bored with that. I'm not talking about Trump anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let them go on their <laughs> shitty ways. Is all I gotta say. Yeah, I mean, I mean especially when you raise a ticket too, and they don't even want to respond to it. Well, yeah, yeah, and look, I've. I'm, the tool I'm using to, and I don't know if I've ever shown this, but this is getting bigger, um, <laughs> is uh, Jenkins. And Jenkins is, when I showed my dev process, uh, Jenkins is the tool that picks things up after you push the code in and, um, and then it runs it through Sonar Cube. Well, I'm using Sonar Cloud now and we get our results. So that's, I'm actually practicing this process for crypto projects and I've got it all running locally. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's where that's how I'm doing that, and I'll show you where you can actually see that on some of your uh, crypto projects as well. Um, uh, so I also did the same thing for Neo. Um, I raised a, a ticket in GitHub, and I said, "Hey guys, um, I scanned it, and you know, found some bugs." Then Eric picked it up, and then Shargon addressed a few of them we identified one where you, you pretty much couldn't do it and we had a nice little conversation and the numbers went down because um i don't know if you remember last week um uh, neo wasn't that great let me just go back i mean it was good it was a lot better than tron but it wasn't perfect um and, and the numbers came down right so we scanned it again and with you know this was over 10 last week and the, so you know it's in a, it's in a good state so i had a really good experience with that it made me feel you know, part of the community. So I think what you should do, guys, is um, now this is publicly available. If uh, one of the projects that we're scanning and we show you today shows a lot of bugs or shows something that you don't like, you don't quite want to see, then I highly recommend you go to this page. Um, this is just an open source page. It's not, yeah, I don't, there's no advertising on it or anything. It's just a community service. But yeah, um, well, um, in the description of this video, I will have the link for this page, so you guys can come to here, check it out yourself, click on it. You know, you can view everything we're we're looking at right now. Yeah, yeah. Like so, with some of these, um, you know, you, you just just go there. Look, I mean, I'll show you how to do it, right? So, literally, just go here. It's all public. Copy the link. Go to go to the GitHub for your project. Go to the issues tab and create a new issue. Put the link in and you, you just type Sonar, you know, so issues found. Um, please take a look. All right. Doesn't really matter what you write. Um, yeah, pretty much the only the only thing you need to get a GitHub account is a um a, a Gmail address. You know, so you can set yourself up pretty easily. Um, so yeah, jump on. If you see anything in these reports that you don't want to, that you don't quite like, jump on and uh, follow this process. I think it's a very good idea.
I do too, especially, you know, if you're highly invested in this and your project is not doing well with quality checks, I definitely would raise the issue and hopefully get it fixed. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Definitely. And I think that's that should be some homework. I don't know whether we, I don't know if you've got anything to give away, but we can definitely give you a mention. <laughs> oh, definitely, man. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple other things I wanted to show as well. I don't know why I kept ending up on there, maybe because I'm in there a fair bit. But one thing um, that I think you need to notice in, or you need to pay attention to in GitHub as well, is um, I know that a lot of people look at the sheer number of um, code pushes for a project, but it doesn't necessarily give you the full story. So I thought that was something worth mentioning. Uh, so you can see in, in this instance here that um, there was uh, one merge, right, which would show up as one if you're scanning this at a high level. But what this guy has done is he's gone and created a branch, his own branch, and done 33 commits in his, you know, on his local machine before it went into the uh, into the trunk. Ooh. So yes, so that's so the, the sheer number of commits. Yeah, it's a good thing to you want to see them flowing, right? But it's, it doesn't give you the full story, and and that holds true. And you can also see that if they are using this type of process, they you, you would expect that to be happening, right? So the guy would be working locally, doing a lot of commits, and eventually when it's ready, it goes via the sheriff. Uh, the Which in Neo's case is Eric Zhang, usually. Pretty much, yeah. Um, and, and then it like, comes in basically as one commit. So if you look at any of the charts, you know, based on the number of commits per week, you know, it could be low when they're actually really doing hundreds of, I mean, even, you know, 100 commits just to get yeah. that right. But it comes in as just one, correct? Yeah, that's right. You'll see one push. Right for this merge, so they'll, so he'll merge what he worked on with the um, you know with the master, and you can see it here. I mean that's the master, that's the one that he worked on, right? Um, and there was an approver, which is cool. Um, and eventually, when it was approved, it was merged, it went in. Um, so that gives you the full story. So that's something you need to look at. I think you need to be aware of when you're looking at GitHub is to go and have a look at these individual issues. And it gives you a good idea that uh, this, this is the type of process that's been followed. A um, couple more things. So I did, that was my homework on Neo. I did that, raised a ticket, had a good experience, didn't have a very good experience with Tron. Uh, I also wanted to show you the tool I used for scanning Elastos last week. Okay. Which was the CPP check. As I noticed that the screen share didn't sort of bring it up. So that's it there. And this is kind of what the uh, outputs look like. Oh, okay. That was the lower level scanner because I couldn't get it through um, Sonar Cloud. So let's dive into some new scans for this week. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. What projects were you thinking? I know you've scanned a lot, but we're only going to pick two or three to go through. Let's start out with um, Knowles because I've had um, another YouTuber, the Martini guy. Um, he's a big Knowles fan, and I told him a little bit about we are going to be scanning it. So if you're watching the Martini guy, check out your project. Yeah, and I would probably want to go raise a GitHub ticket for this one because it didn't scan all that nicely. I scanned out two parts of... Um, uh, two parts of null, so I scanned out the I.O., which is essentially the core chain code. Um, wasn't great. I mean, it's the Tron. And I do like seeing, um, I do like that there's not a whole heap of duplicates, right? Um, so that's one thing that I uh, I haven't really covered all that much is, um, is duplicates. Duplicates are essentially code uh, within the repository that, is either a copy of other code or it's code that does exactly the same thing, so it shouldn't have to be there. Um, I know there have been some people saying that, you know, people are fudging um, commits to GitHub. I think if you have a situation where you've got a lot of duplicates, maybe that's that's a way that that's that could be something that they're that they're doing. Uh, that may be an indicator, may not necessarily be an indicator, but um, it's something to look for because um, if you do a comparison to some of the uh, some of the other ones uh, out there, um, uh, that one was quite high. Um, 
you know, it, it's just an indicator where you've got a lot of code that does the same thing. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are fudging commits. It just, it, it, it could be something. Could be something. So it's an indicator right there. Duplications. That, hey, they might be doing something, but it's not necessarily means the projects in any desperate no. area or anything like that. No, and look, none of this stuff, none of this stuff's going to actually show you where whether the code is actually doing what it's meant to be doing. It's just, you know, it's just, it's just static checks. I mean, one guy raised this in in one of the previous uh, comments and said, look, you know, there are better ways to do analysis at runtime, and yeah, there are, um, but you know, it's going to be beyond what we're showing here, and I think I'll just lose people. So this is just a good indicator. Um, through a warning, because there's more than a hundred bugs. Um, we dive into it. Let's have a look at the time. Let's get the cumulative numbers. I noticed the last couple of videos it was chopping that off, so I hope it's not happening this time. No, I, I moved the um, the our heads, so it's not chop, chopping it off. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so the time estimates, right? That's that's the real one that you want to be looking at is the amount of time it would take uh, to go and actually sort all these out. And at 126 the moment, days of effort. Yeah. But, I mean, that's not necessarily saying, you know, 126 days with eight guys working, you know. Yeah. It could be eight guys working and they're, I mean, it's going to communicate, I mean, all together it's going to take about 126 days, but they could get it done in eight days if they wanted to. Oh, okay. with a Maybe team. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'd be a little bit more conservative, but yeah, you can split, you split this up. I mean, if you've got a team of 20 people, you can give everyone a few each, you know, and you'll get through them pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was Null's, um, that was their core chain, fair few errors. Um, the software development kit, is quite a lot cleaner yeah yeah um and one thing i did notice and i remember last week when i was talking about generics and saying that you know doing everything in go um doesn't support generics mm -hmm. yeah um i had some examples of generics and generics are something that you can that, that is supported in java so uh so their software development kit obviously is going to give people a fair bit of flexibility um, and this scanned out pretty well. Wasn't really worried about that. Uh, it's like you know the the, the numbers are quite um, quite small, which is quite good uh, for fixing the SDK. And the SDK is what people are going to build on. So you know, Nulls is not too bad. Let me just go and have a look at their GitHub quickly. Yeah, see how they are um, communicating on their GitHub. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you guys, you want to see long conversations. You don't want to just see, you know, someone raise an issue and then no talking going on. I mean, yeah. cryptocurrency teams are distributed across. There should be a conversation going on. Mm. Not great. Yeah, it doesn't look like too much conversation is going on. Not very chatty. Mm -hmm. Well, could this almost be like initially, like most of these guys are working in house together, and so okay. they are, you know, conversing with each other, going yeah, through I mean, it back and forth. I mean, but once the the project gets, you know, spread out, you know, like Ethereum is right now, Bitcoin is right now, Neo is right now. You have teams from all over the world. If they're not, if you don't see any conversations on there, you better be worried, correct? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, if, if a lot of these guys are working pretty close to each other, um, then let me just have a look at one of their other rep repositories, um, Nulls SDK. This is the other one that I scanned, which is the software development kit. Hmm. Yeah, look, it's possible that these guys are all working pretty close together and don't have that sort of distributed type of arrangement where um, you're seeing conversations that are a lot more chatty. I showed the Neo example before. You can have a look at Ethereum GitHub just as examples of 
people talking. So right when, you know, Knowles is ready with their chain and um, able for D apps to be built on top of it, if you don't see conversations, you know, something's funky right now. Not too many people are working on it. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they probably are working on it. Just they're just not. To, yeah, but to, you don't have that community, you know. Especially if you're going to be a D app launching platform that you know people are going to be building D apps on. If there's no conversations, you know. It's an empty GitHub. You might be a little bit worried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, just I don't have to show Neo all the time. Just if you want to go see a good one, go build a Bitcoin or Ethereum, like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook monkey. <laughs> so, you know, this is what you, this is what you want to see for a distributed community project. You want to see conversations. You want to see people from different areas. I uh, didn't see that with uh, Nulls and I also, also their, um, their, SD, uh, their SDK scanned out quite nicely. It's not a big deal. It wouldn't take much to sort that out, get the numbers down. Uh, into green lights, but the IO needs a bit of work. So Sorry. basically, you know, Neo gets like a B, B plus, and Knowles would get like a C, C minus right now. If we yeah. had put it on like a grading scale. <laughs> true, true. But like I said, um, that's only from a pure code quality control. And Tron view, would right? get an F. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving Tron an F. <laughs> and <laughs> especially, F. especially, yes, I'm, I'm on board of Tron. I mean, I. I raised the ticket, um, you know, they closed it and they, and this got worse. So, you know, I'm bored with him. So that was that was Niles. Um, I'd like to see a bit more chatter in their GitHub. Um, I also don't see any continuous quality checking in their GitHub, um, which I will show you in a minute what that looks like. And that flows into the process. Uh, that I follow and this isn't written in stone this is just something that served me well in the past but you know the, the general idea is here I yeah didn't see that with Knowles if I get back to it um, now what I'll show you what what that process actually looks like so um, a bit of a follow-on from last week I, I scanned out some of the um, smaller parts of Elastos Okay, Sorry. so it looks like Elastos, the currency side, one bug, two vulnerabilities, 110 okay. co code smells, and 13,000 lines of code. So that's a definite pass. Then, yeah, and what I did like this, what I did like, um, and look, Neo does this as well. Um, and what you can look for, guys, in your projects is, um, so I, I had a look at the carrier, which is a big one. And you can see these continuous integration tools here being used in real yep. time on GitHub. And these are representative of the step that when the code goes in, it, get run, it gets ran through checks. And I was pretty happy to see that. Um, they They're doing sort of, that. So, yeah. And so you'll see for every build, you'll be able to see what happened, you know, who, who put it in, what it did. I mean, a lot of this will just go over your head. But yeah. This is pretty much everything that happened when that code went in. Um, that's the continuous integration because you can see a lot of stuff happens every time you put code in, right? If that thing breaks, uh, the guy, the next guy working on it's going to be working on broken code. Mm -hmm. So you you want to want to make sure that that um, that that's happening. Uh, one good thing I did see about Tron. Uh, this, is, this is the last I'm going to bring up Tron. Uh, <laughs> If they are actually using that. continuous in it. Um, they are using uh, checkers. Yep. Oh, yep. They're doing it. So they built the parsing. So it, it's not all bad news for Tron people. Um, uh, a lot. I mean, a lot of them. This guy's a bit of a menace. This <laughs> <laughs> um, He's fucking up a bunch of shit. Uh, who knows? Uh, but look, they, they, they're running continuous integration, so that's good. So um, let's hope they get there. Uh, so that's a thing that you can click on. So if you're in your, if you're in your project's GitHub and that's available, you can go and go and have a look at this stuff. Uh, this was failing the other day, so 
definitely worth clicking this little button here because it, there's a whole heap of information behind it. And if you look at the history, this is a full list of every every change and what happened. Um, and you can even go in and have a look at what broke. So that's one thing that I noticed that they are doing well. So, you know, thumbs up for Tron on that one. Hey, there we okay. go. Yeah, good work, Tron, on that side of things. So, well done. Uh, I last off the currency side chains. I mean, I scan those. They just they look fine. I mean, I don't even know why I, need, I don't necessarily need to talk about them. They're fine. They're following a process. They scan out nicely. No, it's beautiful. Well, you would think that would happen with, you know, Rong Chen as at the helm of the project. He's been coding with Microsoft for a while. You would think he would have good, you know, continuous quality checks for his code. Yeah, well, you'd think that, and that's what I saw. So, yeah. Um, so, um, the next one. NAS. NAS. Oh, interesting project. So, it looking like it only has 35 bugs, 10 vulnerabilities, 1.5K code smells, and 150,000 lines of code, actually. That's not bad. It's pretty good, yeah. Um, what is NAS? NAS is a decentralized search engine, basically, like a Google. Okay. Nice. Okay, well, I mean, and I had a look at their GitHub. That seemed okay. Um, Nebulous GitHub. Oh. Actually, one thing I did notice about um, Nebulous that's not going too well is I did have a look at one of their repositories and um, <laughs> Well, it scans out pretty well. Um, wasn't a massive amount of chat. It's pretty similar to what we'll see on NAS. Sorry, NALS. I get these acronyms. There's too many acronyms. I know too many sound like Knowles, Nas, Neo. It's like they all chose in too. Yeah. And it might so. be a special like <coughs> letter in the Chinese. Not sure. Not, Not sure. sure either. But a lot of them. So it scanned out. Yeah, it scanned out pretty well uh, for the amount of I mean, you know, for the amount of code there was. But like, you know, there's room for improvement here. So if you're a fan of um if you're a fan of Nas and you know, you want to see those numbers go down a little bit. Um, definitely worth going to their GitHub and raising a ticket. Well, I, I do I have um, a few uh, Nebula's fans in the Chico Crypto Army. So if you guys are watching this video, go raise some tickets. I'm not going to because I'm not the biggest fan of Nas. <laughs> but if you are, definitely raise the tickets. Yeah, hey, we'll make that homework for this week. Go, go and raise a ticket, let us know, and we'll rescan it again. Hopefully the numbers come down. That'd be great. Um, one thing I did notice with, uh, I've got far too many windows open. Nope. Nope. Uh, their build is failing. Ooh. So, yeah. And. I mean, look, sometimes these, I mean, these will be broken from time to time, but this one's been broken. I mean, um, I found this interesting. I'm not going to say anything. I, I fucking failed. No. That's a, <laughs> that's a good name. I fucking, he's failing a bunch. <laughs> that was pretty juvenile, but I had a bit of a chuckle. Um, <laughs> poor guy. I'm sure he's trying really hard. Well, it's okay. Um, Kiko Crypto is a juvenile as can be, so. <laughs> Just think you don't want to I'm like, mm, and uh, I guess he did. Yep. Yes, he fucking failed. It looks like everyone's <laughs> failing. So what does this mean? Like, if everything they're trying to build going in, it means that their code's not necessarily working? Oh, well, their job that's meant to be checking it um, is failing at some point. Um, and I don't know why that is. You have to go through the log. But um, 
So th- somewhere somewhere in their build, it's breaking and no one's fixed it. Mm. Which is not encouraging. So that's something I think they need to improve on because you want to see, the, I mean, you know, the, the idea is that th- those things are there to be broken, right? I mean, they're there to pick it up. But if it's breaking every time, um, that's a problem. Yep. So uh, that's that's somewhere that where they can improve, I guess. So that's NAS. Uh, broken, half decent code. Uh, Shadow's not great, same as Null's, and their build is breaking for their Go repositories. So if you're watching, uh, go and raise a ticket yeah. to that effect. So a project I really, really want to just compare is because I love Neo. And there's the other side of Neo now. There's Ontology. So I've been, yeah. I've been wanting to check out Ontology for a long, long time. Yeah, OK. Scanned Ontology. Um, so the core chain and also the SDK now. Um, I don't know. I'll actually talk about the generics again. Um, so what you wanted to see is, remember when I, I was talking about VChain, which I want to talk a little bit about some more because I, I had, did some more digging onto that because uh, what I found was I found a little bit confusing, um, especially uh, the main question when you put yourself in a developer's shoes is how do I build on top of this thing if, it's, uh, if the function set is so small? And I got my answer. And, got um, your answer. Well, let's yeah. finish that. Let's save that for the finale. Okay, no worries. Uh, look, I scanned Ontology. It's, it's quite clean. Um, I had a look at their GitHub. So That's one thing, too, I've been wanting to look into. I know I could have done this myself, but I've been really busy. Is How is the conversations going on their GitHub? Um, I, I found it quite good. Um, it's not the same level of detail with Neo, but you would expect that because it's not a, it's not as, I mean, it's not a community project, right? Mm-hmm. This guy. Yeah. But they you know, they're, they're following an approval process. Um, and there's a good level of information. You're not just seeing code, you're seeing approvals. Um, actually, I mean, they're following a pretty rigid process. It's just not a massive amount of information per commits, which kind of makes sense, I guess, because it's not a, it's not a community thing. Uh, it's a pretty strict approval process um, on a GitHub. I found that quite good. Um, they so ontology is built in Go. It looks like uh, only the core. The core. The, okay. um, yeah. The um, they're following a. Ooh, that looks uh, nice. Yeah, they got yeah. all passes. You notice how it's the one guy, right? That's that's probably because it's the you know you, you get the sheriff at the end. You know that does that push. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's happening here or kicks off the build. Um, you know for that level of quality. So that's why you get the same guy over and over again, even though there's multiple people committing code. And that's that was very clean. I was pretty happy with that. Um, I was, and the software development kit, I also scanned, which is here. And this is the tool that you build, you use to build on top of. And um, you would think, okay. think though, since like Ontology is creating D apps as well, you would see some conversations though within the SDK because isn't that what these the app users are going to be using to build with. Yeah. Um, and there's good information on how you use this thing. Uh, the, the GitHub's not particularly chatty. Um, if we dig back a bit. Yeah, it's mainly the same goals. Again. Um, some of these are just code. Um, what one, one good thing I did find about it is um, I think I found, remember I was talking about generics yesterday, no, last, yesterday, last week when um, I mentioned that, you know, when you when you did everything in Go or, or if you're not providing for generics and you're sort of boxing people in, mm-hmm. um, uh, I just wanted to just bring up an example of that. So they're, they're in the ontology code. You can see them here. Uh, uh, like I said, generics is just a slightly looser way of defining a data structure within your code that gives people a little bit more flexibility. Um, you, know, you can see they're using them all over the place. 
um, if Ethereum does, Neo is using them. Um, it's that level of flexibility, which is good. It means people building on top of ontology aren't going to be as boxed in, I guess. Um, so that was a plus, I felt. And scanned out quite well. The GitHub wasn't particularly chatty, but I mean, I mean, it, 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 ontology is more of a closed team right now. Yeah, it would seem that way. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to the finale, the V chain, V chain. So what's going on with the V chain? Well, I wanted to. So I scanned out some. Okay, so Ethereum, there's, 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 there's like a, a million different ways to build stuff for Ethereum. I also went in and had a look at, and same, the same goes for Neo, right? Um, there's a software development kit for Go, there's a software development kit for JavaScript, there's a Python one. It's a whole bunch of different ways to, uh, to build these out. And you know what? Guess who builds these? Um, take careful typing that one in. Guess who builds these? It's not Neo. And it's City it's of these Life. guys. Yeah, the community. Like, you know, they get so these guys deserve every friggin' cent they they get. And um, and you saw that Russia deal. It was, it was a cause guy. On, that on the cause guy that made that deal. Yeah. So you know, you, I want to see more of this. I want to see more causes. <laughs> I want to see more. Well, we do have more causes. I guess there's one in Brazil. I can't remember their name. Then you have um, a, a group out of Japan, and then you have a couple in China as well. Yeah. Yeah, good. So I want to see more of that, and I want to see more of that money going out, and hopefully that uh, financial report shows that. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we, if we don't see that, then I want to see Neo doing some shit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'll be pissed if I don't see that either. Um, so the key thing that we were looking at last week was um, VeChain and just pretty much how small the – and I did – I hadn't actually scanned out four or five, but how small the actual um, dev kit was for it. And essentially, I will put myself in the shoes of, okay, I'm a developer. I want to build a D app for VeChain and run it on VeChain. How do I do it, right? Um because uh, I was looking at that, and this is like 600, 600 lines of code. 15 lines of code. Yeah, it's quite small. Um, it's TypeScript, which is Node.js. It's quite good. I mean, that's flexible. So my comment about the flexibility might might not have been all that accurate. But you, you jump in there, and this is what I'm seeing, right? So the – and the good thing about VChain is they are using um, – they have got a build tool, and it's – passing for the most part but there's a whole bunch of stuff in it um but the so you've got four or five and web three here so but i mean the essential the, the main way to build out a from what i could see and i validated this uh, is to use the web three gear and the web three gear is actually an ethereum piece of software um and that's Pretty much the way you would need to build out a D app on uh, on V Chain, and it's using it's using the web it's using the Web Free Kit from the Ethereum community. Which, so literally, they just took it and then slapped it on top of V Chain. Uh, yeah, well, not even that. They're just they're just using it. Um, so if you look at if you, if you if you look at all the methods in there. Um, you know, they're all Ethereum. And that's the thing. This is just one way to build um, to build D apps on Ethereum. Ethereum's got like a million other different ways to build stuff for it. And they're just using one, which is the, the Web3 gear. Um, so, and I wasn't too sure what to make of that, but I actually even followed. There was like, there's not a whole heap of information out there, but some guy um, out on Reddit a little while ago published uh, how to build it. A, a D app on V chain, and uh, you know this is not me just throwing, you know, just throwing information around. I did I did do my research here, and uh, obviously you know you need your Thorify and you need your Web three gear, which is the Ethereum software. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I found this quite interesting. This sort of validated what I was saying. So that's the guy who posted. Yeah. So to be honest, and it's expected as Ethereum is number two and the first to really implement smart contract, Ethereum has way more tools and resources in VeChain. 
honestly, I think the write up I posted is the only way is the only write up on how to build a D app on V chain. Great for someone to come in and take over. So basically, they are limiting how to build on Ethereum. I mean, on V oh. chain right now. Well, I won't say that they're limiting. They just don't have a massive amount of options right now. Yeah, so limiting. They're limited. <laughs> well, yeah, until they build it, but it's not built yet, right? I mean, there is one way. There is one way to get something working on, on VeChain, and it uses parts of Ethereum code. I mean, that's just, it's just, it's right here. I mean, I'm just looking at it. Because uh, I was a bit confused to see the SDK being so small and then, then dug a bit deeper and realized that you actually do need the, um, uh, the Web3 gear, uh, which is actually, I haven't scanned that. Um, yeah, this guy, from, and it's from Ethereum. Um, and the, the, that's right, you, you also pointed me to um, DecentBet, right? Yep, DecentBet. Uh, they're supposed to be, um, well, they were building on Ethereum first, and then they forked over to NEO, or not NEO, VeChain. So this further, this further, this just adds adds validity to what I'm saying. So if anyone wants to debate me, that's fine. Right? But here it is, right in your face, right? Web three dot js. Yep, forked. Right. This just proves that this is the way that you write on it. And what I did find interesting is, um, so he forked it, and. How's their build going? Oh, it's passing now. Hey. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it has. It finally got there. Okay, cool. Um, I was noticing a lot of fails. So, yeah. So they finally got it through. Yeah, looks like it. Hmm. Might so, be good for the decent bet, people. They got it through. They got it finally working. <laughs> Yeah, I and mean, this is just proof that yeah, look that you know there is there's ways well, there is a way to build on a D app on top of V chain. Yeah, but that's that's the only way. So, in my opinion, you know, if you're looking to build out a D app ecosystem, kind of confining your developers into one way, you're not going to attract too many developers for one, and they're not going to be able to. I mean, build the kind of D apps you would be looking for for your platform as you know, there's only one way to do it. Pretty much. Flexibility is not there. No, I can't see it. I mean, I, I did put myself in the shoes of, okay, I want to go build something on um, V chain. How do I do it? And like I said, you, you, this is, you can see it in the, uh, you can see it in the descent bet, decent bet, uh, where have I gone? You can see it in here. They've grabbed Thorify. They've grabbed the Web3.js, which is what the Web3 gear from Ethereum. And then if it says here, or from Ethereum, <laughs> mm -hmm. you need this. I mean, so the, the one the one main tool to build this stuff out is provided by Ethereum. So this is just, it's just uh, at, the, at this point in time, it's just a copy and pasta. Uh, I would say it's an alternative, an alternate chain for running Web3 D apps that you would build for Ethereum. I mean, I can't see anything more than that. Yeah. What's one thing I would be interested, I mean, eventually to see is how much these alternative chains for um, Ethereum, Tron, V Chain, Qtum, how do these chains actually clock out in PPS? Yeah, I mean, and there's one thing to have, you know, you saw it with you saw it with Neo, right? That the, the, the TPS was X, and then that was with simulated traffic. Then you point real traffic on, like you know, with Switchio, and it, would, it turned out to be a lot less. You know, um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big difference between simulated traffic and real real human. world traffic out there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You, um, so you, you can claim all you want. Um, I want to see it. I want to see it um, used. Yep. Sorry. And uh, what's going to be funny too, I think, is a lot of these platforms aren't even going to get to see that because they're not going to be used at all. 
and we'll see on the way the market's going. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, look, I, I can see the way the market's going right now. If your if your project has a lot of tools available for it um, to allow people to build on top of it, which you know you have with now, you've got with Ethereum, um, you know, even you know, to a lesser extent. Um, Ontology has an, a good SDK, it seems. Um, you know, if you're giving people a lot of tools and a lot of flexibility to build on top of your project, then, uh, you know, regardless of the price, I think it's going to still be around. It'll, it'll, you know, it'll always have users. People will use it. And if you're only giving people, you know, one sort of small-ish way of building on top of it, I mean, you've got to wonder what's the point. What's the point, exactly. Well, hopefully we do see. I mean, again, this isn't us trying to FUD any projects and say it's garbage. We actually want to see these this stuff improve. Yep, definitely. And I did notice that with um, that they have started the uh, region. They have started working on a Java client, um, which will be a lot more flexible. Um, it's just I can't really find any information about um, how you would leverage that. And I scanned that out and it, it's not too bad. It's not as clean as the other stuff. But it looks like they are attempting to, you know, to move on to more complex uh, languages. So I guess that's, that's something. So they may, they may have already realised that they have a quite a limiting framework and they need to be providing you know more information or more tool sets I should say yeah well I mean I know you're not going to like this what I'm about to say um but in the comments any viewers if you have requests for projects for you know us to go through this is going to be all up to Bill because Bill is the one who knows how to do this um if Bill chooses it we might feature it on the next um video when we go through some other projects yeah well, I mean, this is what my dashboard's looking like. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, so there's some more. There's some more in there that we um, we already did scan that we didn't cover today. So, oh, um, I did Travala as well, the user experience side. So oh, Neo D app Travala. Okay. I did the user experience side of it. Uh, scanned that out, and it scanned out pretty good. Um, the, the code's private at the moment because they got a lot of uh, competitors, but I was able to talk them into letting me have access to it. So I scanned that out. Um, they've got a few issues uh, and the guys are going to work on that for the next release. Um, huh, no way. That came up that way. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I had the wrong thing. Um, yeah, so seven bugs. It looks like it's only one hour and 22 minutes of effort. Yeah, um, some vulnerabilities and code smells, but um, yeah, look, it's it's fine. I scanned that out, so I was able to, I was able to talk them into giving me that code, and um, it looks good. Yeah, it was fine. So you know, I've got to take it down because <laughs> I just wanted to scan it though. So um, yeah, it's a combination of Java, JavaScript, uh, Python, and HTML. So that's the Javala website, so I didn't want to play favorites, so I, you know, because I like that project as well. To scan it, obviously, it needs a little bit of work, um, but it scans out quite nicely. Well, you're doing a major service, Bill, to the community. I mean, as you can see, the videos are doing pretty well. People are interested in this type of stuff because no one is going through it. No one. Someone sent me to Neo as well. Thank you, whoever did that. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> No one sent me to Neo? What the hell? No, don't send me a Neo. <laughs> you didn't have to. Invel the Neo, not me. Uh, yeah. If it's, uh, so, yeah. Any, sandwich. any <laughs> of you guys out there within the world, you know, you like a project, um, leave it in the comments. Let us know you want it scanned. And um, if Bill decides, he may take a look through it and run it through the um, Jenkins and Sonar Cloud. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's been quite cool. I got a little bit carried away with this, and I need to jump off now because I've got to go be dad for a little while because I've been up in Sydney for a couple of days and not really pulling my weight. So, um, time permitting, we'll um, 
we'll, you know, we'll just keep keep this list going. Now the projects are all public, so Tyler's going to put the links in. Just go and have a look at them. Yep. And raise those raise those GitHub tickets. Tell I'll, us put, I'll put all the links. I'll put Neo's. Uh, I mean, Bill's Neo address and anyone, you guys, congratulate Bill on being a new father. <laughs> Got to go take care of the little one. Yeah, well, I'm not going to be much of a father and I'll, I'll be a single dad. <laughs> keep, 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 keep it going. All right. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to let you go. And uh, hey, thanks for having me on there. Of course. Um, thank you for coming on, Bill. It's always a pleasure. And like I said earlier, you're doing the service for the communities. Yeah, thanks, mate. No problem, man. Yeah. Have a good have a good one with the, the little one. I will. All See right. You, See ya.